good to see you. We're here to talk about your teaching and your work at Heart Leadership Program. Can we say our work? Our work would be great. Yes, we can. Um, so when we first met, you were you were uh, doing something very different. You were involved in international work. You were involved in work with Latinos here in America. You were leading trips to Nicaragua on the front lines then of a lot of important international issues. And so here you are, I guess that was some 30 years ago, and you're, you're teaching now at Heart Leadership, you're leading this program, and how did that, how did you get from there to here? Just on a heart level, wanting to know, you know, growing up in a, in a family that didn't have very much money, but wanting to, to, to be more immersed in the reality of people who, from what I had heard, just from stories of other people who had been social workers, uh, working with the migrant stream on the East Coast and in North Carolina that, you know, these are folks who were, um, of course, still being horribly exploited. Um, I think from what I've heard, it hasn't changed a whole, whole lot even since then. What happened in those days is I got to know the, 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 the biggies in, Nor in North Carolina who were working on social justice issues. Of course, Sister Evelyn Mattern was a biggie, um, and, but there were no, a number of other wonderful people who'd been doing this work for a long time in lots of different settings, but who had a, an abiding interest in the, in the, the social justice um, issues connected with migrant labor and, and health conditions and working conditions. And I got to know the legal community, and so one thing led to another. And I was just completely politicized mm -hmm. in that one year. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what was the natural springboard for doing the work in Central America, and there are all kinds of stories connected to that. But it was an organic process, and that's one of the things I, I talk to my students about all the time uh, is um, oftentimes they don't know what I'm talking about and they're intrigued by it, but um, I try over the course of my time with them, especially if I have them with me for a year, to tease out w examples of what it means. But a, a, a phrase I use a lot is trust the organic progression of the work. And I tell them, you know, I've learned that from my own experience. You've got a lot working against you right now that doesn't give you that message. But if you, if you do kind of relax into life to the extent that you can, wow, will it show you what the next step is. Mm -hmm. And that you can really come to trust your gut if, you, if you're marrying it with your head uh, and your heart. You gotta have, actually I've come to see these as three distinct things, but they all go together. Um, and I instinctively went in that direction when I was young. And then one thing led to the next thing, led to the next thing, led to the next thing. Of course, you know, how did I meet you? You could say that was serendipity. Um, I'm sure it was, you know, it was just one of those little funny accidents in life. We didn't know each other. We were doing completely different work and then we just met each other. Mm -hmm. Somebody told me about you. Well, but somebody, some, some various somebodies have been telling mm -hmm. me about you. Right. And then it just kind of, it kind of came together and boom, mm -hmm. like my memory is when we met each other, it's just like, okay, mm -hmm. this crazy guy's going to start this mm -hmm. newspaper. I'm meant to be the photographer, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then that grew into the photography editor, yeah. and you know, so everything, like one thing leads to the next thing leads to that, okay, it's all directly connected to what I do right now, what I teach my students. It's, Let me ask you a couple of things. Sure. You've mentioned a couple of interesting things, I think, that one of the unusual things about your teaching, very unusual, I think, and almost unique at Duke, and you mentioned it, which is, you said, especially if I have my students for a year. Mm -hmm. Very few faculty-student relationships at Duke or anywhere that I know in any formal sense are for a year. But you do have your students for a year, and it includes right. a summer. It includes two semesters and the summer in between. And the relationships, I'm sure, are um, – there's an intensity to that, mm -hmm. and there is a um, – there's something very, uh, you know, let's just say round about that that I think that a lot of professors don't get mm. and students don't get. So talk about that, the, the SOL program a little bit and what it means to have students for a year. You know, from the beginning my instinct was it really should be a whole year. Um, other people I was working with, Bob Korstadt and others, had, that, had a feeling about that too. Uh, but I just knew it had to be, and it had to be a very intensive year 
and that um, and it was it was based on um, my having had these intensive year-long experiences myself when I was in my early 20s. And yeah. there, there are a lot of people that, that don't know about the SOUL program, and right. even if they know a little bit about heart leadership, so yeah. talk about the SOUL program, because yeah. I know that's really at the at the center of, of mm -hmm. what you do. Right. And so, so uh, describe it a little bit, and, and mm -hmm. how you see each of the important parts. And of mm -hmm. course, I've talked the intro course with you, and so I know about it, but, right. but talk about that a little you know from having taught it with me that really it's about um, getting people to the point through narrative because everything we teach is narrative driven you and I very much have that in common in the way we teach very much wonderful stories about complexity about real things unfolding in the real world where people with wonderful intentions are uh, from border crossing. You and I came up with that title. I love that title. You don't know what that means either. So it's border crossing, leadership, value conflicts in public life. What the heck does that mean? You know, we're not trying to puzzle people, but we want that's really what the course is about. Yeah. So it's about collisions of cultures. You have wonderful intentions. You think you are going to bestow your wonderful gifts on the world, and in a way you are, and in a way God help us. You know, and... <laughs> <laughs> and and so really the course is about wonderful intentions meeting reality and then what and and it's not about becoming cynical it's about you know having your um, perspective opened up in a in a in a st kind of startling way I think mm -hmm. it's a little bit startling mm -hmm. um, and so that you can begin to wonder maybe have questions. I think if if students end the course with a lot of questions, yeah. then I think we've been successful. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we do really intensive, um, I mean, it's rudimentary, rudimentary research methods training, but that's gotten better and better over the years. We've really refined that. And um, the whole critical reflection process, the training for the letter home, the personal reflective writing, and, and also just building the cohesion of the group. and. Um, students having to go through the application process uh, to get a soul grant because it's not a given that they'll get one. Um, although magically, magically, um, every year we've had um, around 20 students apply for the grants. They just sort of um, uh, self-select and we've always had the money. We've never had to turn anybody away. Um, and they're and going all sorts of amazing places and some maybe not so amazing but doing trying to be connected to groups that are doing amazing things. Yes, it's really inspiring. Um, it, and, and at the same time, what I get to see in the preparation course is students coming, on, coming out with I, what I call the glamorous idea for their uh, summer project, and then going through a process of coming down to earth and making it more, making the project plan more feasible, beginning to build the relationships with the community partners, and then realizing, hopefully, they, I, most of them do. I mean, they go through pretty intensive training and a lot of networking and talking to my staff and talking to each other, that they, there's just so much they don't know and that really, it's it, again, it's just entering into the situation somewhat prepared, but, but just really being open and being humble because it's really going to shape be shaped um, when they get to the field. We use that term a lot. And so getting them to that point and then all kinds of different things will happen over the summer and they are literally going to be all over the world. And then they do these wonderful summer projects. They have assignments due every week. Um, and then they come back in the fall and do the capstone course. The capstone is the, is the real leadership course. So they get a taste of it in, in the summer. They have a con more of a context for then beginning to seriously um, explore and test out this framework we call the adaptive leadership framework and again that's driven that's narrative driven it's case studies films and videos and also the the largest case study is the case study the students themselves generate so they usually it's a topic that they that is directly connected to their summer experience but they spend the whole semester creating a research portfolio that becomes a case study that they then apply what we call the adaptive analysis too. So the whole the whole course is about that. There's this intensification that happens, especially in the capstone course, 
because the students come back and they're just they're ready to get to work you know and there's so that's the value of being together for a year they have I think they have a, a little bit of a sense that this might be true but what always impresses me is when they come back in the fall um, with no prompting on my part I don't need to do anything mm -hmm. they just seem so grateful to be together again mm -hmm. you know and to mm -hmm. and to and to see this is a learning community we can there's no bullshit in this, you know, excuse my French. Uh, you know, this is, they, they want, my buddies won't let me get by with bullshit. You know, it's, it's a very honest, very honest uh, community. And yet at the same time, it's, so it's tough, it's tough minded um, in critiques of each other's work and, and, that, and analyzing the case studies, learning, learning this really, really frustrating to learn adaptive framework starting to test it out but um, at the same time there's a kind of a, there's real warmth and acceptance and uh, even you know sometimes I don't know you could even use the word tenderness um, in the community and that's what the students crave. Well and that um, I know is kind of part of your leadership your, your philosophy about teaching leadership which is giving the work back to people. Exactly. And so explain yeah. Why don't you talk a little bit about that and maybe about just kind of the adaptive leadership framework in general. So you went to graduate school at Harvard and you met Ronnie Heifetz there and he uh, is a mentor of sorts, I would say, mm -hmm. is that right? Right. And, and not only that though, he is a, um, a theorist and practitioner mm -hmm. and so you're not the only person that, that he, that, that uh, thinks about things in a, in, a, in a framework that he has helped develop, but um, you have, a, you have a, a definite theory about how to teach leadership. Right. And so maybe start with that and, and say some things about that, mm -hmm. some, of the, uh, some, yeah. of the, some of the watch words and some of the principles and, that you think are important. Okay. Um, before I can even do that, though, I have to yeah. say how much I hate the word leadership. Because uh -huh. if I don't say that, that's as my husband says, that's the bomb. Go ahead and drop the bomb. <laughs> I tell my I tell my students that they always just they look so shocked like what the hell is she talking about? Yeah. Like, uh, why why do you hate that word? Now it means something to me, and and I want people to I want it to mean something to my students. I want them to claim a meaning for it. But what I hate is the automatic pilot association. Uh, well, it's just a word that's lost its meaning. Leadership is the, is the activity of building the capacity of the group to learn its way through. What I think can be taught is just um, uh, asking yourself that question of what is the work? What is the work? What is the work that I think, you know, often as a starting point I just ask students to imagine what, what do you think? You're, you're traipsing along here at a good clip, you're doing really well, you're very successful, you're going to go to med school, you're going to go to law school, you're going to go to business school, you're going to, you know, mm, do this, you're going to do that. Uh, where do you see yourself in 10 years and what do you actually really think the work is that you're going to be doing? And if they stop and think about it, they, they realize um, it's going to be, they're probably going to be in a position of authority and that's a whole really interesting part of the work is beginning to distinguish what exercising authority is from exercising leadership. They go together, they're wonderful, but we tend to conflate the two. That's another reason why you have to tease all this stuff out, right? Um, and they're not the same thing because the leadership is about opening things up and authority is about holding things together and you need both. But they, they see that they're going to be in a position of authority and they're, they're excited and proud about that notion, you know, um, and that probably, yeah, they're going to they're, they're gonna be dealing with some really complicated things, and are they really ready for that? So if I can get them interested in thinking about the real work that they might be doing, even if they don't know details, and some acknowledgement that it's probably going to be complicated, they're probably not going to have all the answers, they're probably going to be part of very complicated systems, and so then what? Then what does leadership mean? And then, then hopefully I've gotten their, you know, their, their imagination, they're kind of engaged. Then we start playing with the word adaptive because that's a really important word. And that word means, you know, in this context it means building, helping to build the adaptive capacity of the group. It's, it's about human flourishing, you know? It's, so it's about 
positive social outcomes, but you have to, you know, we use all these wonderful little expressions. You have to learn to love the swamp mm -hmm. to get to that place, you know, mm -hmm. and you got to, you got to slog through all the muck and the mire and, and see that, that that's good stuff, that's not bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we use a term a lot, developing a stomach for complexity, developing a stomach for conflict. Um, what is it that you want to impart? You know, do, is there something that you wanted to see, you, would, you want your students to understand just having a year with you, that you want them to, uh, to be a way of thinking about living? Oh, yeah. Wow, that's great. I do. Yes, I do. Because, <laughs> you know, I mean, as I said earlier, to me, it really is all about courage, um, which is connected to gut. Courage comes from your gut. Cur courage is something, to me, courage is something that's a natural expression of being. It's not something you make yourself. Uh, you can't make yourself be courageous. It's not willpower. It's something that comes out of a practice, a way of being. It is a way of being, a way of living, uh, where you're it, you're you're grounded. You know, you're grounded. You're connected to what's important. You it. Uh, I mean, fa you know, for me, it is family. Absolutely. I mean it. It does help that I come from a family that's been here since the 1600s, so that you know that sense of groundedness is literally there. Uh, such a blessing. But I mean, um, you know, it's going to be different for different people. Whatever it takes, it's a practice. You have to devote yourself to um, tending that. You know, it's it's alive, and and yet it's it, the reward is that it helps you become more and more who you really are you know and so it's I want my my wish for my students is that they um, uh, learn to love learn to love complexity but keep it simple you know which I know it doesn't make any sense but it, they go together it's like keep it simple learn to love the complexity but cut right through it to the essence keep it simple settle in be yourself, um, and from that you're just going to see uh, when to stick your neck out. It's just going to be a natural, a natural thing. It, and I'm not saying it won't require effort, but you, the passion will be there. You don't have to manufacture it. It's just right there. It comes from that connection, you know, that connection to the collective, whatever it is. Um, and that's the juicy stuff, you know, that's the juicy stuff. It's so it is about taking risks. And when you're grounded in that way, you, 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 you don't go, you don't like take risks in a willy nilly way. You, you, you know, you know when the time comes for you to take the risk, whatever the risk is, you just know it. There is almost a quality of inevitability about it if you're paying attention. And you just do it, and it's ordinary. It's not glamorous. When you do it, it's not ordinary. It's just you just do it. You know that the other thing we the term we use a lot is just do the work. You know you're not trying to. It's not about you. It is about you, but it's not about you. <laughs> and that's my wish. You know, so it's really it's just about being alive. It's about being grounded. It's about that practice of. You know, the older I get, I keep kind of referring to it as grounded sensitivity. It's like a readiness. And then if, if you have cultivated that um, in, in lots of different ways, there's certain things that work for me, uh, but each person has to find his or her own way. You know, you know that, you know you're tuning, you, you kind of see how you're connected to the group that you're, you're part of. Then the other stuff, it just takes on a life of its own. You just know you're going to be a hellraiser. It's going to happen. <laughs> and, and you just figure it out. You see it. You see it and you do it. And boy, is it fun.